So John Collins and the Hawks did not agree to a contract extension, which surprised me because I thought they were going to come to a Jalen Brown type of agreement where it would not be a max, but 20 something million a year, that sort of thing. But I think it's safe to assume that Collins and his people either want a max or pretty close to it. The Hawks were not comfortable with giving that to him. And now next offseason, he will become a restricted free agent, which means a whole bunch of possibilities open up. Number one is the Hawks match whatever offer Collins gets next free agency. Some of the teams who could give him an offer, there's Miami. They've got a whole bunch of team options that they could decline. There's Dallas if they get off of a little bit more salary. The Spurs are going to have a whole bunch of cap space, assuming they let go of Aldridge and DeRozan. They did just give Derek White an extension, but they still have a lot of money to spend next offseason. The Knicks are going to have cap space, whether they want Collins, I don't know. OKC, same thing. Do they want to use some of their cap space on a real player this early on in their rebuilds? Maybe, maybe not. We'll have to see. There's also possibilities of a sign-in trade. You can do that with a restricted free agent, assuming he has not signed an offer sheet with a different team. And that opens it up to every single team in the league, so I'm not even going to try speculating on that one. They could move him during the season. And Collins makes about $4 million, so they'd have to pair up other money with him if they wanted to get the real significant player, unless they were going to trade for somebody who's also on their rookie deal. Or there's a chance the Hawks can try to get underneath the salary cap and uh, then they don't have to match money at all. There's also a chance the Hawks could just not match an offer next offseason and they lose him for nothing. And as for why they're not comfortable giving him that money, I mean, for one, they obviously just must not think that he's a max guy. Number two is they'd be getting pretty expensive. I mean, you look at the 2023, well, let's say 2024 team, okay? Trey Young's got a max contract. Bogdan's going to have an $18 million player option. My gut right now is he will accept that. He might end up being super awesome when he's 32 years old, but he's probably going to accept that 18. And then you're also going to be dealing with a Kongwu who's about to walk into his extension that season. DeAndre Hunter is going to be on his extension. Cam Reddish might be on his. Kevin Herter will be on his if they end up keeping all those guys. And then you just throw a big fat John Collins max in there. And that's pretty much the Atlanta Hawks for a long time. I assume the Hawks believe that they can keep those other guys for smaller contracts that are pretty affordable and they can be nice complimentary pieces. But if John Collins is going to be your number two guy, then you're locking yourself into being probably what they assume to be not good enough to compete for a title and all that good stuff. And by the way, for 2024... There's a chance they're going to have to re-sign Capella as well. So you can kind of see the logic if they think Collins isn't that guy and also some of their other contracts. Now, we assume they're going to make deals throughout the years as you would, of course. But uh, yeah, that's the gist with their money situation. Um, and as far as the possibilities of him being traded this season, so there's actually some conflicting information. Some websites tell me the Hawks are underneath the salary cap. Others tell me they're a little above it. I don't really know, but if they're over the cap, then their options are basically John Collins is $4 million and Tony Snell's $12 million and perhaps even Rondo's 7.5 or Chris Dunn's 4.7. And the hope is that you can get to as close to around 20 to maybe even a little above $20 million, which allows you to trade for somebody who potentially makes about mid-20s in salary and of course, anybody who makes less than that. And there are some options around the league. If we look at some players, there's Buddy Heald, LaMarcus Aldridge, Harrison Barnes, Victor Oladipo, Malcolm Brogdon, Zach Levine, Terry Rozier, Tim Hardaway Jr., Julius Randle, Aaron Gordon. Do we think any of those guys would be a really good return for John Collins? I mean, if the Hawks are just set on this guy's not part of our future, then in their eyes, perhaps. Now, if the Hawks are under the salary cap, as basketball reference suggests they are, then you can kind of trade for anybody, assuming they don't make like 30 plus million. But even when I think about that, I'm saying to myself, who's really getting moved? I mean, Bradley Beal's not going to want out this year. I guess I could picture Otto Porter getting traded. 
And that could be a possibility, I guess. But that's, again, that's if the Hawks are under the cap and some of these websites might be lying to me. Now, if you want to get real wild and some star player wants out at the deadline or so, or if James Harden has just not been moved by that point, at that point, the Hawks would be able to trade Bogdan and whoever else they signed this offseason. At least I'm pretty sure they would be. And then you could include Collins and that sort of thing, and maybe Houston would actually want that, but it seems like Harden's going to get moved within the next, I don't know, week or so. And then again, as I think about star players who could want out of their situations, I can't really see anybody for this season. I don't think Carl Anthony Towns is going to want out this year. Now, there are some cheaper guys. Let's say if it's just John Collins and Tony Snell's contract, which is about $16 million, then you're getting into the realm of guys like Evan Fournier, Eric Bledsoe. I don't know if either one of them really fit with this team. That's another thing about this Hawks team, if there's going to be a Collins move in the year. The roster's kind of set. So somebody's feelings are going to have to get hurt or you're going to have to throw a rotation player in the move. Besides Collins, I mean. So I don't know what the move is. I'm sure there's possibilities of how they could do it. So that's the real option. And like I said, again, could it could come down to a sign and trade next offseason and any team could get in on that point. Especially because in the offseason, teams don't have cap space at certain points or they do have cap space, I should say, and that opens up not having to match salaries and that sort of thing. So I guess just we think about the Hawks now. I mean, what is it going to take from John Collins for Atlanta to believe that he's deserving of a max contract? I mean, I would assume he's got to get better as a playmaker, better as a defensive player. I mean, he's got more career turnovers than he does assists right now. As far as putting the ball in the basket, he's pretty all right. He can catch lobs. He's grabbing offensive rebounds he's got some post moves he got better from three he's got an off the dribble game you probably wish that he was shooting a few more free throws a game so maybe some more physicality around the basket that sort of thing but I mean to me John Collins has the potential to score about 25 points a game and when you think about his place on this Hawks team there's definitely going to be a lot of screens set by him for Trey and for Rondo and Chris Dunn and Bogdan and we also assume that he's going to have his moments with having his isos or elbow touches or that type of thing so I'm assuming he basically just needs to maintain what he's been doing on offense maybe be a little better from three not in terms of percentage but in terms of attempts and then improve on defense and the Hawks would probably be comfortable giving him that money now the Okongwu selection I mean, we say all the time, draft the best player, don't draft for fit. We'll have to see in time if Okongwu ends up being the best player who was available at number six. The odds suggest probably not, but, you know, it's still a possibility. And, uh, I mean, if the Hawks picked him at number six, do they envision a world in which Collins, Capella, and Okongwu can all play together? I mean, the scenario for that would be Collins would probably be the small forward. And defensively, Okongwu and Capella would make up for maybe Collins not being the best. Even with that, that sounds very optimistic to me. I mean, you would need Okongwu to really progress as an offensive player. And there's talk about how he can make some plays off the dribble in time. And he's a good passer. But that's still a lot to ask for. And between those three guys... If the Hawks believe that Collins just doesn't really fit, then I guess this is step one in him not being in Atlanta if we fast forward to next season. Now, I think the other question is, will there be some passive aggressiveness on John Collins' part going into the season now? It might be fine. I don't think he's going to lash out at his teammates or anything because he's not negotiating his contract with them, but... This is going to be sitting in the back of his mind, and there's a chance it's totally fine. I mean, the Celtics did a similar thing with Marcus Smart. Granted, it was safe to assume Marcus Smart was not going to get a max contract offer, but still, it's not unheard of for someone to not get an extension. You go into the season, and it's like, all right. There is one other possibility that I want to present. It's back to the idea of him getting traded during the season. So... 
again, I'm pretty sure they're over the cap. I think basketball reference is lying to me about them being under the cap. So assuming they're over the cap and they mainly just have to match money, could we see Collins traded for another player who is on their rookie deal? Now that's kind of unique and doesn't happen all the time with significant young players. But this is also a unique situation, so maybe that sort of thing could happen where another team swaps their good third-year player or something for Collins because they think Collins is better. I mean, maybe a rookie ends up emerging as a real player, and then the Hawks want that guy, and they trade Collins' $4 million, and you negotiate picks and whatever else. Now, with that being said, I can't really think of a good example. I mean, for the sake of just trying to paint the picture. The idea could be John Collins for Kobe White's plus stuff. I don't think that one's going to happen, but try to make your own version of that somewhere in the NBA. I guess the last thing to consider, and this is similar to the John Collins passive aggressiveness, but it's more so with Trey Young. Because Trey already said after, what, his second season that he wanted actual players and they got him actual players. Uh, how's he going to feel if they're BSing the guy who has actually been good with Trey Young since Trey showed up in the NBA? Not that I think Trey Young is thinking about causing havoc to get out of there, and even if he tried that, the Hawks still wouldn't move him. I mean, Trey Young is definitely going to get a max contract. But I guess it's just a little extra nugget to put in there. Like, maybe you don't want to make your star player mad going into his third season. So, yeah, that is uh, pretty much it. It's it's something we don't see very often. Usually these type of things get ironed out one way or another. And uh, now it's going to be a story all year.